I got this Mac Pro for free. Seems like a great deal, doesn't it? Well, as you'll see in today's video, trying to fix this not quite fully functional Mac Pro ended up being quite a pain. That's why I'm super glad that iFixit sponsored today's video. This kind of thing is right up their alley. So if you're undertaking a repair and diagnosis project, definitely check out the links in the description below. And in today's video, we are going to get to the bottom of why this computer wasn't working with quite a bit of trial and error. So if you're excited to see what I uncover about this machine, make sure to get subscribed and let's get started. Okay, so a little bit about this machine. Well, it's a 2010 5.1 Mac Pro, and there are two main things wrong with it. Number one, it doesn't boot up. So that's a big, that's a big thing. But number two is that it does have some cosmetic damage. See, this foot over here is totally caved in and the, the whole thing is a little bit crooked. The goal is to see if we can figure out why it's not booting up and then also fix that. Now, if I go ahead and flip this thing around, the other issue that we're gonna need to solve is that there is, in fact, no graphics card. And that, that's the unfortunate part about these Cheese Grater Mac Pros now, is that part of what made them so great in the past was that you could just slap some GPUs in there, whatever you wanted, basically, as long as it was supported by Mac OS, which is pretty much all modern AMD GPUs, you could stick it in there, and you'd be off to the races. The problem is now, GPUs are so expensive that just that factor alone kind of rules out building a custom Cheese Grater Mac Pro. It's unfortunate, but that's just kind of the way things are now. Fortunately, because I'm a tech YouTuber, I have an extra GPU laying around. I actually bought this GPU about a year ago for a different Mac Pro project, and fortuitously, I kept it. That was a great decision, because I paid $90 for this RX 580, and right now you're probably going, wow, I wish I could pay $90 for an RX 580, but we're also gonna need this. It's an adapter that converts the two mini six pin connectors that are on the logic board of this machine into a full eight pin normal person connector, which we'll need for the graphics card. Now, another thing you have to keep in mind when you get an adapter like this is you can't just plug in literally whatever card you want because as we all know, PCIe slots supply 75 watts of power and these two mini six pins make that an additional 75 watts for 150 watts total. If you have a graphics card with a really high TDP, you are gonna need to hardwire that into the power supply. I have a video from like a year ago where I did that and I put a Radeon 7 in one of these machines. It's a bit of a hassle, but it's not that hard to do. And honestly, I would just probably put like a Vega 64 in here if you can find one for cheap, because then you don't need to do that mod. You can just use one of these adapters. Okay, graphics card is in. Now, I think there is a hard drive right up here. What do we got? It's a Western Digital one terabyte. I don't know if anything's on this drive, but I figure if we're dealing with a boot issue, I wanna know that there's a good drive in here. So, we're just gonna plug in this random 120 gigabyte SSD that I'm pretty sure has El Capitan on it, so I know it'll boot up on this machine. I don't know if this thing is flashed to be able to run Mojave, and so that should give us the best possible circumstances to try to isolate what's wrong with this device. Because you gotta remember, when you're working on a desktop like this, specifically these Cheese Grater Mac Pros, there's a number of things that could prevent you from getting a signal. You could have a dead graphics card. It could be booted perfectly fine, but you're not gonna see anything if your graphics card isn't working, or if your SSD doesn't have macOS on it. Because when you have a custom graphics card, you don't see the boot animation with the little slider. Okay, SSD in, and then I've got my fun little portable monitor. I'll link this in the, in the description. I use it in a lot of videos, and I often get asked what it is. That was loud. Fans are going. I'm feeling air coming out the back. I heard 
some mechanically sounds and switching. Now that's interesting. There's a red unblinking light on the CPU tray. Oh, interesting. Apparently the dual CPU trays have a red LED for each processor, which would let you isolate which one had failed, but we only have one processor, therefore one light. So yeah, the fact that there would be two LEDs for the two processors definitely indicates a CPU issue rather than RAM. So fortunately, that's pretty easy to fix on these machines because the CPUs, the, the CPU tray slides out, which we'll do in a second, and the CPUs for these things are crazy cheap, like insanely cheap. Now, of course, being a tech channel, I've done a bunch of videos on Mac Pros, and I just happen to have a CPU that would be compatible. There's actually a really long list of compatible CPUs for 4,1 and 5,1 Mac Pros. I'll have that linked in the description, of course. This particular one is a Xeon X5670. So the most powerful one I believe that you could put in this machine is the 5690, which is the 3.46 gigahertz six core processor. Um, these processors are really, really cheap. I guarantee you'd be able to find these for like 15 bucks. And we're just gonna go ahead and upgrade the CPU. So removing the CPU tray of one of these Mac Pros is ridiculously easy. You have these two tabs at the front and then the whole thing just slides right out, which gives you easy access to the CPU, heatsink, and RAM. This particular Mac Pro is a single CPU model, so there's one heatsink and there are four RAM slots. Now, in order to take this off, we do need a special tool. This long, I think it's a three millimeter hex wrench. And the reason it has to be long is because the screws are all the way at the very, very bottom here. Wiping off the top of the CPU reveals that this is an X5690. Dang it. Well, looks like someone did try to put the best possible CPU in here, but unfortunately, it seems to have perished. All right, now simple procedure for putting in the new CPU. There's two little tabs taken out of it. Those line up right over there. Just pop that right in. And there we have it. CPU has been upgraded, or I guess technically it's a downgrade from a 5690 to a 5670, but at least this one uh, will work. Well, here's the moment of truth. So weirdly enough, the same light on the CPU is still there. This is a real mystery, folks. It's been a couple minutes. Doesn't look like it's booting up. So maybe the CPU wasn't the problem? It could be the heatsink, it could be the RAM, or it could be the, the tray itself. So we're gonna have to do some more testing. Right, so I did some troubleshooting and was not able to figure out why this machine isn't booting up. Neither CPU is working. I tried swapping some of the RAM around. I got nothing. So I just went ahead and bought this, an empty CPU tray with the heatsink. And then I put the 3.4 gigahertz processor the X5690, the fastest that you can put in a single core Mac Pro that we had in this machine already. I put that in here. Next, we're gonna swap the RAM in here and just put this new CPU tray in to see if that'll fix our issue. Now that's a lot of fan noise. The blinds in the background are fluttering in the wind right now. You know what, folks? I think I know why this is happening. I bought this as a 5,1 Mac Pro CPU tray, but I think this is a 4,1 tray because those, if you put them in a newer Mac Pro, the fans start going. That means I have to order another CPU tray. Oh my God, this project never ends. So finally, after much trial and error, I was able to get this machine to booted, 
really quickly, here's what I had to do. Basically, what I did was bought yet another CPU tray, this time making sure it was the correct 4,1 tray. I took off the heatsink and I replaced that CPU with an X5680. To be honest, I have no idea where that CPU came from because I had an X5670 and I pulled out an X5690 that was in the tray that I'm not sure was working. Uh, so honestly, I, I don't remember where this X5680 came from. But then I moved over the RAM, the same RAM that was in this computer originally that has now been moved into two separate CPU trays put that all back in, tried to boot it up, but it didn't work because I forgot about the fact that I was using an SSD that had El Capitan on it when I was using an RX 580 graphics card, which is much newer than that, so El Capitan doesn't support it, so it wasn't booting up with a picture. So then I was like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna get the GT120 graphics card that I've had for a couple of years, because that's the graphics card that you need if you want to get into like the boot switcher or see the Apple booting logo. So I was like, okay, well, I'll go get that. But then I remembered that that card doesn't have HDMI on it. And this monitor doesn't have mini display port or a DVI connection. So then I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get an adapter, but I didn't want to wait. So then I remembered that I have a MacBook Pro, a 17 inch that's running High Sierra. So I grabbed the SSD out of that, put it in here, and finally, here we are with a booted up Mac Pro. Yeah, that is how frustrating it can be to work on one of these. So when you are buying, or in, as in this case, finding a free Mac Pro of this generation, it seems easy. There's a lot that you can do to customize these things, but there are so many things that you have to remember when you're working on them. Certain CPUs won't work in certain trays. The trays won't work in certain computers. The 5,1 single CPU tray looks visually identical to the 4,1 tray. The only difference is a firmware difference. But if you put a 5,1 in a 4,1 or vice versa, it won't boot. You get that giant fan noise that was blowing dust everywhere. I had an allergic reaction to the dust. I had hives on my hands and I had difficulty breathing. I ha there was like disease in the computer. Oh my gosh. If like me, you're getting one of these things without a hard drive, you have no idea whether the previous person flashed it and was running Mojave or if they were still using the original graphics card on El Capitan. So you don't know which operating system you can put in it, which determines which graphics card you can put in it to test it. Now, obviously this doesn't apply if you are buying a sorted and booting Mac Pro. If you can boot into your Mac Pro, then honestly, most of these problems won't be there because you'll know what CPU, you'll know what RAM, you'll know what operating system and the graphics card, and you can go from there. If you need to flash it, you can do that. If you need to upgrade to Mojave, there's a path to do that. Apple has support documentation. But if you're like me trying to diagnose one of these, there's so many things that you have to keep in mind and so many different tests that you have to do to get to the bottom of the issue. I mean, it was free, which is great. The parts for doing the upgrades are pretty cheap. The CPUs, you're not gonna spend more than like 80 bucks on an X5690, the fastest one you can put in here. You can also put in boatloads of RAM very cheaply. You can put in 32 gigabytes for like 50 bucks. It's great. However, graphics cards, are kind of ruining these things right now. As I mentioned at the beginning, I've got an RX 580 in here. It's a very solid card when it was 90 bucks a year ago when I bought it. But right now, people are asking $300 for an RX 580. What? Like, that's, that's crazy. And so when you're talking about putting one of those in, as this is a 12-year-old desktop, you're spending 300 bucks on a four-year-old graphics card, you're spending really about 300 bucks for a pretty bare bones 4 comma one. Then you gotta add in another 50 bucks for a CPU, maybe 50 bucks for RAM, $70 for a decent SSD. Uh, then you can add like Wi-Fi modules. You can add more expensive graphics cards if you want to, additional hard drives. It's very easy to get to a point where you're spending almost a thousand dollars on a single CPU 12-year-old Mac Pro. It's a little bit tough to recommend this right now because 
you know, 300 bucks, 400, 500, once you're starting to get some upgrades, you're creeping right up against M1 Mac Mini territory. And I mean, this is already, by Apple's admission, vintage, obsolete. It doesn't get the current version of Mac OS. You're always gonna be sort of jankily working around things. I ran Cinebench on this thing. It's pretty decent. It scores about 4,200, which is not bad. However, once you start specking it out a little bit, it doesn't feel like a modern computer. Even when you have respectable Cinebench scores, even when you have an SSD installed in it, this is a big old computer. The single core scores are never gonna get anywhere close to modern processor. Uh, even with an SSD, it doesn't feel super snappy. My hope is that over the next few months, GPU prices are gonna start coming back to reasonable pricing. And at that point, as a GPU workstation, compared to other things that Apple has to offer, this is one of the only times that you can just plop in whatever modern AMD GPU you want and just use it right away. But I don't know if they're worth it right now, especially, especially if you have to do what I did, which is try to fix or troubleshoot or diagnose one of these things. Because my goodness, this definitely took me a couple of weeks to do because of all of the different parts that I had to order to troubleshoot this thing. So definitely a bit of a pain. But hopefully, if, if you want to do something like this, I'll make your life a little bit easier by linking parts and tools in the product tray and in the description down below. So check those resources out. Big thanks to iFixit for sponsoring this because honestly, right to repair is super duper important. I think I'm going to make a whole video talking about what this new right to repair legislation means and specifically what it means for Apple because this is the type of computer that iFixit loves. You can change out every single component on it, literally all of them. And that's what I wanna see again from Apple. Now currently the, the 2019 to present Intel Mac Pro has a lot of the same upgradability and modularity. You can check out iFixit's guides on that. And it's great, but Apple Silicon so far has been going in the wrong direction. And sometimes it's fun to get back in and work on one of these things and, and even in, in, in diagnosing it, I whipped out a 17-inch MacBook Pro, popped the hard drive out of that in like two seconds because you've got iFixit tools and iFixit guides, which show you how to do it. It's very easy to do. I just wish that we could get a little bit of that back because as annoying as this was to work on, I was able to work on it. With any modern Mac, you'd basically be at, well, I have to buy a new logic board. And yeah, iFixit can help you replace that logic board with their guides and with the iFixit Pro Tech Toolkit, but it still comes down to an entire computer that has to get replaced instead of pulling out little bits and pieces without having to throw away the entire thing. And that's what I want to see more of. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this project. It was really more of an experience than a project, but whatever. Let me know down below what you thought of it. As usual, I'll see you all in the next video.